Okay, today we will be discussing about the surgery. Okay, much better. Today we will be discussing much about the surgery here. So speaking about the surgery, the high yield areas are your urology. And apart from urology, you will be having your, uh, what do we call it? Uh, you'll be having your uh, hepatobiliary. And after the hepatobiliary, you will be having your GIT. And after GIT, you will be having your uh, breast and thyroid gland. After breast and thyroid gland, you will be finishing up with your um, surgery. The, those are the high yield symptoms of your surgery. So that you will be able to, uh, you know, uh, score most of the marks from these areas. Uh, if you could hear my voice and see the screen properly, type yes in the chat box once again. One last uh, voice check, people. If you could hear my voice and see the screen properly, type S on the chat box. Hear my voice on the chat box. Good. So I heard like the voice has been very low. How about now? Are you guys able to listen to me properly? Is that good? Was that good, Mana Sweeney? Is my voice clear and you can able to hear me properly? I hope everybody could be able to hear my pro hear me properly. Yes or no? Okay. So speaking about the first one, we are going to talk about. The first one we are going to talk about, as I told you, from the high yield to the low yield, I'm going to travel. So the very first one I'm going to talk about is your urology, that is your genetic, your genital urinary system. So genital urinary system, uh, the topic we're going to talk about is your renal cell carcinoma. The very first topic we're going to talk about is your renal cell carcinoma. Let me give the heading of surgery. Okay. So surgery. Well, the surgery we are going to talk about the renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma. Speaking about the renal cell carcinoma, uh, smokers and the tobacco chewers is having a highest risk. Smokers and uh, tobacco consumers is having a highest risk. And after that, renal cell carcinoma is one of the carcinoma which is spreads through the hematogenously. Which spreads through hematogenously. What is the other carcinoma which uh, spreads through the hematogenous root? What is another carcinoma which spreads to the hematogenous root? The other carcinoma which spreads to the hematogenous root is your HCC. Only HCC and RCC will spread to the hemato hematogenous root. And what is the most common triad? We saw yesterday, what is the triad for RCC? What is the triad for RCC? Pain. Palpable abdominal mass followed by hematuria. Yes or no? Pain, palpable abdominal mass followed by hematuria. Yes or no? And mostly RCC arises from mostly RCC arise from DCT. Mostly RCC arise from distal collecting tubule. And what is the investigation of choice for the RCC? That is CT, another important MCQ. 
investigation of choice is always CT in the case of your RCC. Apart from that, what is the most common type of renal cell carcinoma? That is a clear cell carcinoma. We are having a several type. We are having a several type. Among them, the most common one is your clear cell. Common type is your clear cell. And you have a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma, which is having a multiple chromosomal loss. Multiple chromosomal losses through your chromophobe variety. Chromosomal loss is via your chromophobe variety. Chromophobe variety. Speaking about the chromophobe variety, the chromosome which has been lost are 1, 2, 6, 10, 13, 17. 1, 2, 6, 10, 13, 17, 21, and Y. 21 and Y. I mostly add up a 4 on each of them. So 2, 1, comma, 1 and 2, 2 plus 4, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, and then 10 plus uh, 3 here. 13 and then 13 plus uh, 4, 17, 17 plus 4, 21. This is how I used to remember the chromophobe variety. Yeah. Except the 10 and 13 and then 1 and 2, you have all the addition of 4, you can able to get the chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. So this is all about uh, your renal cell carcinoma highlight people. So what is a renal cell carcinoma? The tumor which are rising in the kidney. And the most common subtype of the renal cell carcinoma is your clear cell carcinoma, which is mostly arising in PCT and overall type. It is a more and it is associated with the VHL mutation. I rather write it. VHL one hippel Lindau mutation will be seen on the chromosome three is associated with the clear cell carcinoma. Chromosome three is associated with the clear cell carcinoma, and then you have other types like a Bellini duct type and a papillary type. Papillary renal cell carcinoma, you see the Samama bodies, we already talked about it. And apart from that, you have a Bellini duct carcinoma where you see associated with the sickle cell triad. And you have a chromophobic variety, which is using the multiple chromosomal loss, where the chromosomal loss could be of 1, 2, 6, 10, 13, 17, and 21. Apart from 21, you have Y. Mm, these are the four important things you need to know in the case of your renal cell carcinoma. And the triad for the renal cell carcinoma are palpable abdominal mass, pain, followed by your hematuria. Okay. And apart from the renal cell carcinoma, you are having a polycystic. There's two types. One is a pediatric type and another one is an adult type. We're going to talk about the adult type mainly. So adult type is basically uh, autosomal dominant. Adult variety is basically autosomal dominant. And both bilateral, both kidneys are affected. And the defective chromosomes are chromosome number 4 and 16. And mostly it is associated with the hypertension uh, over the pain followed by hematuria followed by nocturia. And investigation of choice is always a CT scan. I was a CT scan always. You can able to get the uh, uh, adult polycystic kidney disease. And apart from that, you can do the nephrogram. And speaking about the nephrogram, the you get a characteristic appearance called the Swiss cheese appearance. You get a characteristic appearance called the Swiss cheese appearance on the nephrogram. You can write it. No, his brain is not visible. One second, one second. Uh, how about now? Can everybody able to see the screen properly? Mm -hmm. Okay. So speaking about, speaking about, okay, speaking about the re adult polycystic kidney disease, it's a bilateral and it's autosomal dominant and it will be presented with the chromosome number 416 are affected. Investigation of choice is CT and you see the nephrogram and in the nephrogram it will be mostly presented with nephrogram it will be mostly presented with sunburst appearance or Swiss cheese appearance. Sunburst appearance or Swiss cheese appearance. Swiss cheese appearance. Followed by your 
or you can see the bilateral spider leg appearance bilateral spider leg appearance that's a quite common uh, appearance you be asked in the fmg and apart from that you have a, a most common extra renal cyst apart from the polycystic kidney disease you see in the liver uh, mostly the treatment of choice is always a renal transplantation or it is always a renal transplantation okay and apart from that in the urology we have done carcinoma apart from that you have a horseshoe kidney speaking about the horseshoe kidney so horseshoe kidney you see the flower vase appearance of ureter very very important classical mcq flower vase appearance ureter appearance of ureter flower vase appearance of ureter and the most common thing is your most common symptom is your uh, abdominal pain most common symptom is your abdominal pain abdominal pain and apart from that apart from that most of the uh, patients have been uh, usually asymptomatic and mostly the fusion occurs uh fusion occurs in the case of your uh, horseshoe kidney is always a lower fuel lower pole fusion uh in the case of your horseshoe kidney the, there are two types of uh, fusion may occur either upper pole or lower pole and lower pole fusion is most common one lower pole fusion is a most common one let me write the most common fusion that is your lower pole one lower pole fusion is the most common lower pole fusion is a most common and the artery and the artery which gets blocked and the artery which gets blocked because of this uh, lower pole fusion is your uh, inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery is compressed another one of the classical mcqs you see in the case of your fmg that is your uh, lower pole fusion what is the artery you get up uh, you get uh, what do we call it uh, you get a compressed during the lower pole fusion is your uh, inferior mesenteric artery okay and the treatment of choice is always pyeloplasty apart from that you have a cobra head appearance which is seen in the urethral seal let me give you the heading of urethral seal urethral seal so speaking about the urethral seal cystic dilation of your terminal ureter dilation of your terminal ureter you know terminal ureter and the most common type is ectopic most common type is ectopic ectopic and uh, ivp shows a cobra head appearance what is that cobra head appearance you will see in the ivp okay and treatment is always a cyst excision and treatment is always a cyst excision okay so speaking about this these are the important one apart from that you have to talk about the stones uh, renal stones and their pain formation speaking about the renal stones renal stones is quite a topic you always need to remember so pain progression depending upon the pain progression you will calculate the location of the renal stone but prior to that i wanted to talk about the types of the stone i wanted to talk about the types of the stone the most common urinary stone you will be seeing is the most common urinary stone you will be seeing is calcium oxalate stone very good happy pillow so the most common stone you will be seeing is your calcium oxalate calcium oxalate is a stone you see in the uh, kidney most commonly and apart from that this calcium oxalate is also known as mulberry stone also known as mulberry stone another important mcq 
Okay, apart from that, you have a triple pass page stone. Apart from that, you have a triple pass page stone or fast page stone. Fast page stone, it have a triple, it have a variety of names. So the other names of fast page stones are also known as true white stone. Important MCQ is true white stone, jack stone, and stag on stone. Jack stone and stag on stone and stag on stone okay speaking about that it is always associated with another very very important so remember p for p phosphate is for the protease infection phosphate is for the protease infection where you see the alkaline urine here people where you see the alkaline urine Apart from that, you have a uric acid stone that is a radiolucent one, and cysteine and cysteine stone. Cysteine stone. In the case of a cysteine stone, what's the speciality is when you remove on removal, the stone will be turned from pink to yellow. Pink to yellow. And when exposed to air, when exposed to air. exposed to air it will be turned out to green it will be turned out to green apart from that you will see the indinavir stone in the AIDS patient because the indinavir is a drug you give for the HIV so mostly associated with the AIDS patient AIDS patient I have to write it in this way mostly associated with the AIDS patient Apart from that, you have a xanthine stone that is also urea, radial use in plants. Okay, these are the types of stone. There are certain drugs also which is causing a real nerve stone like a pitrin, septron, ciprofloxus, and loop diuretics, laxatives. Everything could cause a, um, what do we call it, stones. So basically, whenever the patient is coming with the renal stone, the patient always presented with a uh, special type of pain. So what type of pain indicates uh, the suggestive of the renal stone, okay? So low in pain to rare, low in pain which radiates to test is type of pain and location of stone, I rather say. Give the heading of type of pain and location. So speaking about the type of pain, low in pain radiates to testers. Low in pain radiates to testers. If the stone is obstructed in the PUJ. The stone is obstructed into the PUJ. When you get a pain at the McBurney point, when you get a pain at the McBurney point, then the stone is in the mid ureter. Then the stone is in the mid ureter. So the pain which is radiating from inner thigh and groin, inner thigh and groin used to call it as a lower ureteric stone. Lower ureter, the stone is in the lower ureter and you get a scrangery pain, scrangery pain. Then it is on the uterine, sorry, ureteric musculature. Ureteric musculature. Then it is on the ureteric musculature. Apart from that, the low in pain which radiates to the tip of penis, pain radiates to the tip of penis, penis, then intramural calculi will be there. Intramural calculi will be the presenting feature. Calculi, no, okay. it will be the presenting features. Okay. Apart from that, you have a CT classification for renal cyst, CT classification for a renal cyst. And speaking about the CT classification of the renal cyst, we are having a Bosniak classification for the renal cyst. Okay, what is the classification we use as Bosniak classification for the renal cyst. Classification we use as for renal cyst. For renal cyst, that is a Bosniak classification. That is Bosniak classification. 
another important MCQ. Okay, fine. And apart from that, apart from that, the treatment is always a dietary management. That is a fluid, excessive fluid intake, salt restriction, cranberry juice. You give them excessively, it will be fine. And apart from that, the surgical treatment will always be either a ESWL or PCNL. And for a distal stone, you do the ureteroscopy. Okay, ureteroscopy. Scope. Speaking about the ESWL, that is extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, is mainly for the small stone. Is mainly for the small stone, and the, for a PCNL is mainly for the stone greater than two centimeter. And apart from that, you have a cystine calculus, or uh, whenever the stone is present in the diverticulum, that's the time you prefer ES. Uh, sorry, PCNL over ESWL. Okay, when do you prefer PCNL over ESWL? That is stone on diverticulum. Stone on diverticulum you prefer, and for a large stones you prefer PCNL. Large stones you prefer PCNL. Okay, and for a ESWL is for the smaller stone. ESWL is for the smaller stone. And apart from that, it is contraindicated in pregnancy and bleeding disorder. Pregnancy and bleeding disorder, it is contraindicated. Pregnancy and bleeding disorder, it is contraindicated. What is the most common complication of ESWL? The complication of ESWL is pain stress. What is a complication? Stain stress is a complication of ESWF. So the stain stress is so called as a stone street, that is, a fragmented stone will be accumulating in the distal ureter and obstruct them. It's so called as a stain stress. Okay, stain stress. Apart from that, these are the calculus we have seen. Uh, renal cyst classification we have seen, and we have, uh, we have been seeing the renal cell carcinoma. And uh, speaking about the renal cell carcinoma, you are having a certain grading system called as Furman grading system or Leibovitz score. You see in the case of a renal cell carcinoma, and the treatment of choice for the renal cell carcinoma is always a partial nephrectomy or radial ne radical nephrectomy. And then you have a Wurm's tumor, which is seen in the case of your uh, uh, pediatric age group. So, what is a triad for Wilms tumor? Once again, I want to, I don't want to talk much about the Wilms tumor. I wanted to talk about the uh, triad for the Wilms tumor. Tell me the triad for the Wilms tumor, people. Tell me the triad for the Wilms tumor. Tell me the triad for the Wilms tumor. Nida was saying fever, exactly fever. Very good, Nida, go ahead, fever. Fever, abdominal mass and hematuria, very good. Fever, abdominal mass and hematuria. Instead of pain, you get a pyrexia in the case of your uh, bum. semester and then we have talked about the genitourinary TB so speaking about the genitourinary TB so the classical findings are pretty important uh, most common feature of a TB is uh, increased urinary frequency urinary frequency increased urinary frequency and apart from that you get a sterile pyuria Sterile pyuria, sterile pyuria, and in the IVP, it shows a blunting of calyx. IVP it shows a blunting of calyx. IVP shows a blunting of calyx, and the kidney shows the putti kidney or cement kidney. Putti kidney or cement kidney. Putti kidney or cement kidney. And in the ureter, you get a golf hole ureter. Ureter, you will get a golf hole ureter. 
poke hole ureter and bladder you get a thimble bladder and bladder you get a thimble bladder thimble bladder and okay these are the important features you will see in the gag of genital urinary tb so with this we have completed almost uh, most of the important ones uh apart from that you have ectopic ureter ectopic ureter is associated with the duplicate ureter most common site of ectopic ureter in a male is a prostatic ureter sorry posterior ureter and female is the normal ureter and uh, you have a vagus may rule upper pole obstruction could cause hydronephrosis and lower pole obstruction could cause pyelonephritis and apart from that ectopic ureter is associated with the drooping lily sign ivp shows a drooping lily sign again okay and uh, you have that uh, what do we call it uh, vesico ureteral reflex then and then you have a ureteral injury like a straddle injury will cause a fracture of pelvis permutant sign is seen in the perineal hematoma and all and you have a urinary bladder calculi yes apart from that you have a urinary bladder calculi most common type of a uh, urinary bladder calculi is most common bladder stone as what is that most common bladder stone people what is that most common bladder stone you will be having what is the most common bladder stone you will be having most common type of bladder stone ammonium urate stones very good ammonium urate stones ammonium urate stones in the case of your urinary bladder stones the most common stones are your ammonium urate stones apart from that you have a cancer bladder and the staging of the cancer bladder tnm staging is there and apart from that apart from that there are certain uh there is certain things you need to know called as a pph benign prostatic hyperplasia uh speaking about the benign prostatic hyperplasia what are the complications of your benign prostatic hyperplasia are really important most common complication of bph is most common complication of bph is what is the most common complication people what is the most common complication people what is the most common complication of bph once again retrograde ejaculation is a most common complication retrograde ejaculation is a most common complication you see in the case of in the case of your uh, torp and for torp is a treatment of choice for a bph okay and apart from that the operation you do for the prostate is your young's operation okay operation you do for the prostate is your young's operation bph young's operation you do young's operation you do young's operation you do and apart from that what is this uh, we are having a cancer prostate and speaking about the cancer prostate speaking about the cancer prostate what is the scoring system we use for the cancer prostate that is a gleason scoring that is a gleason scoring gleason scoring is a scoring we use for the cancer prostate okay apart from that you have that uh, small things in the case of your penis like uh, pyemosis and parapyemosis and priapism and uh, there are certain shunt you place for those priapism like uh, winter shunt sachet shunt gray action you study that already in the case of your uh, uh, what do we call it in the case of your surgery a, a surgery with the expanded classes you have been covered about that so, so far in the in the urology what we have talked about was like a renal cell carcinoma followed by the important highlights of your kidney and urinary bladder and important tb uh, sorry important uh, conditions associated with that so thimble bladder is seen in 
thimble bladder is seen in fast 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 thimble bladder is seen in genito urinary tb very good genito urinary tb spider leg appearance is seen in spider leg appearance is seen in spider leg appearance is seen in polycystic kidney disease autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease very good young operation is done for young's operation is done for young's operation is done for prostate very good what is the most common complication of your turp which you uses for the bph what is the most common complication of a turp retrograde ejaculation very good retrograde ejaculation okay very good so pain radiates from a low end to the testes the calculus is located at pain radiating from the low end to the testes the calculus is located at puj very good pain radiates to the tip of penis from the low end to the tip of penis from the low end to the tip of penis that is a intramural calculi very good intra mural calculi very good triad of wilms tumor art triad of wilms tumor art very good fever that is a pyrexia followed by abdominal mass followed by hematuria pyrexia abdominal mass followed by hematuria okay horseshoe kidney contains a lower pole fusion which compresses what artery the horseshoe kidney have a lower pole fusion which have a higher chances of compressing what artery inferior mesenteric artery very good inferior mesenteric artery okay very good very good okay and apart from that what is the most common stone present in the urinary bladder most common stone present in the urinary bladder ammonium urate stone very good most common stone present in the kidney most common stone present in the kidney calcium oxalate very good calcium oxalate very good very nicely so that we could able to move on to the uh, another section of your uh, second high yield topic that is your gat and hepatobiliary gat and hepatobiliary is the next topic we're going to talk about it and on the gat and hepatobiliary the very first thing on the gat we're going to talk about is your chps congenital pyloric hypertrophic pyloric stenosis write it here so chps causing a gastric outlet obstruction gastric outlet obstruction especially fourth week after birth fourth week after birth and apart from that you have an investigation of choice for chps is always usg and the operation you done for the chps is operation you do for the chps is ramstedel operation ramps the little operation is the operation you do for the chps and apart from that you have a peptic ulcer disease we have done yesterday itself the peptic ulcer disease so peptic ulcer disease is mostly associated with the h pylori that is your ues positive organism h pylori and the most common causes most common location is duodenum location is duodenum and the duodenum the pain relief the duodenal peptic ulcer is of two type one is a duodenal ulcer and a gastric ulcer so how the vineyard will be is like the pain relieved by food is always presented with the duodenal ulcer pain relieved by food is always done by your uh, duodenal ulcer while the pain exacerbated by the food pain exacerbated or worsens by the food 
by food is so called as gastric one. Or sent by the food is called as gastric one. And the investigation of choices UGA scopy, UGA scopy, and the treatment is cap drug. Cap drug. We have already discussed about that. So, what are the surgical management? How are we going to do the surgical management? We can able to do the either a highly selective vagotomy, either we can do the highly selective vagotomy. Highly selective vagotomy. Or we can do the vagotomy plus enterectomy. Vagotomy plus enterectomy. We can do it. Or we can do the Billroth type 1 and type 2 surgery. Build growth type 1 and type 2 surgery we can do. Build growth type 1 and type 2 you can do. Type 2 you can do. And uh, or else you can do the peritoneal lavage. Or you can do the peritoneal lavage. And speaking about the dysphagia, speaking about the dysphagia, so the dysphagia for liquid over solid is seen in, liquid over solid is seen in, liquid over solid is seen in, achalasia cardia, is seen in achalasia cardia. Achalasia. Esophageal carcinoma. Seen an esophageal carcinoma. Okay. Here, the investigation of choice for the achalasia cardia is investigation of choice for the achalasia cardia is esophageal manometry. Esophageal manometry. And the treatment of choice is Ellers myotomy. Ellers myotomy. Ellers myotomy. And in the case of esophageal carcinoma, the investigation of choice is barium swallow. Barium swallow. Is the investigation of choice? Uh, sorry, yeah, investigation of choice, and it's uh, especially screening. You can do the for any tumor screening. You can do the investigator. Uh, sorry, you can do the barium swallow, and for any tumor, the definitive diagnosis always comes with the biopsy. For any tumor, the definitive diagnosis always comes with the biopsy. Okay. This is all about that and apart from that apart from that you will be having a certain signs in the abdomen important signs of abdomen and conditions conditions number one is chandelier sign chandelier sign is seen in PID pelvic inflammatory disease and uh, Claybrook sign Claybrook sign is seen in ruptured abdominal viscera. Ruptured abdominal viscera. Viscera. And you have a Danforth sign is seen in the hemoperitoneum. Danforth sign you see in the hemoperitoneum. And you have a further chill sign. Further chill sign. 
sign you will see in the case of erectus muscle hematomas you will see in the case of erectus muscle hematomas apart from that you have a ten horn sign which is seen in the acute appendicitis ten horn sign you will see in the acute appendicitis acute appendicitis acute appendicitis is here the you will see in the case of your so can you scroll a little bit above yes these are the important conditions and they are differential diagnosis people just type yes or you can say yes they just type yes or uh, say yes once you finish writing Just type yes or say yes once you finish writing. Yes, sir. Okay. So these are the important conditions you need to know in the case of your uh, what do we call it uh, the uh, appendix uh, sorry uh, abdomen and pelvis. Okay. In the speaking of your surgery, the important conditions you need to know in the case of your abdomen and pelvis is this signs and their important conditions. Apart from that. Apart from that, you have certain other things also to be noticed. Apart from that, you have certain other things also need to be considered. The one of the important things you need to know here is the difference between the difference between the uh, ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease. Okay, what is the next one you have to know? Difference between the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease. Most people do not have the table. But I wanted to uh, write you all this entire table because one question may definitely come from this table. Okay, one question may definitely come from this table. As I talked to you yesterday about the pathology, I have added a few points. Like it is a Crohn's disease is a ASCA positive, while ulcer ulcerative colitis is a while ulcerative colitis is a. Come on, people, fast. Ulcerative colitis is a P anka positive. Is that no? Ulcerative colitis is a P anka positive. Crohn's is ASCA, while ulcerative colitis P anka. Very good. And apart from that, apart from that, in the Crohn's you will be seeing, in the Crohn's you will be seeing a skip lesions. The crowns you will be seeing a skip lesions or discontinuous lesions, or you can also see the regional ileitis. I rather say one part you can able to see that, uh, another part you will not able to see that. Okay. While in the case of ulcerative colitis, the lesion is ulcerative colitis. The lesion is the lesion is continuous or discontinuous. There will be a continuous lesion. And that continuous lesion, you will also see one more feature called as backwater ileitis. Okay, continuous lesion slash backwater ileitis is a feature I wanted to write it. Slash backwater ileitis. Backwater ileitis. And apart from that, apart from that, the gene which is responsible for the gene which is responsible for the Crohn's disease is CARD gene, C A R D CARD gene, or you can able to call it as a BRCA 17Q, which is seen in the BRCA. And apart from that, here you will see the BRCA 13Q in the case of ulcerative colitis and a chromosome number 12. BRCA 13Q. And chromosome number 12 in the case of your ulcerative colitis. And basically, Crohn's disease is curable 
while ulcerative colitis is non curable ulcerative colitis is non curable and the crohn's disease is showing a bimodal distribution while ulcerative colitis it can occur in all age it can occur in all age all age so uh, apart from that you have a what is the most common location for the crohn's disease most common location of cancer for crohn's disease i would have to say cancer for a crohn's disease is your terminal ileum is your terminal ileum while well, here you do not have a specific one the cancer cell occurs in everywhere okay cancer cells occurs everywhere cancer occurs all over i got the right all over okay apart from that you hear you see the aptus ulcer or serpentinous ulcer of the crohn's disease serpentinous ulcer or aptus ulcer ulcer or aptus ulcer you will see in the crohn's ulcer you will see in the case of crohn's while you see the pseudo polyp in the case of ulcerative colitis pseudo polyp in the case of ulcerative colitis and you see the cobblestone appearance in the crohn's cobblestone appearance in the crohn's and here you will see the lead pipe or hose pipe appearance lead pipe or hose pipe appearance hose pipe appearance and apart from that you see the uh, fistula or non caseating granuloma in the crohn's fistula or non caseating granuloma non caseating granuloma in crohn's granuloma in crohn's while you see the crypt abscess in ulcerative colitis crypt abscess in ulcerative colitis okay crypt abscess in ulcerative colitis and in the case of a crohn's you see the string sign of cantor you will see the string sign of cantor string string sign of cantor you will see in the case of your crohn's disease you will see in the case of your crohn's disease okay now while here you will see the toxic megacola while here you will see the toxic megacola okay and apart from that apart from that it could lead to the uh, complications like extra intestinal manifestations are common extra intestinal manifestations are common with the crohn's for example it can lead to the ankylosing spondylosis uh, it can lead to the what do we call it gallbladder stones uh, apart from that it can lead to arthritis and and all okay uh, ankylosing spondylosis etc okay spondylosis gall stone arthritis and so on etc i just rather write to the ankylosing spondylosis hello while well, here it cannot be going out the only complication it will cause is psc primary sclerosing cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis you will be seeing here and apart from that here the treatment for a uh, crohn's the treatment for crohn's is usually a symptomatic but you can remove the strictures picture removal surgery you can do speaking about the stricture removal surgery if you are having a single stricture removal if you want to remove the single stricture removal you can do the finney stricture plastic you can do the finney stricture plastic stricture plastic if you want to remove the multiple one multiple one you can remove you can do the mecolith surgery you can do the mecolith surgery mecolith surgery and apart from that you can use a vienna classification for 
your Vienna classification for your crons. Vienna classification is basically based on the ABC parameter that is age, behavior, and location. Well, in the case of ulcerative colitis, it will cause a collar button ulcer, hence the management is collar button ulcer, hence the management is always total proctocolectomy, total proctocolectomy, colectomy with ileal and anal anastomosis you can do. Ileal, anal, anastomosis you can do. Anastomosis you can do. Okay, this is all about, this is all about your difference between the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Quite an extraordinary table which contains a lot of information most of the book do not contains all this information so write it as a table and keep everything in your mind okay keep everything in your mind clear everyone because ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease you will be having a definitely one question that's why i have been giving you all the things in the case of your ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease okay clear everyone shall i move on to the next one Shall I move on to the next one? Yes. Ulcerative colitis. Shall I move on to the next one? Okay, much better. So we are having a, uh, apart from that, you will be having some sort of a named hernia. So in the case of a named hernia, we'll be talking about a variety of hernia. Only the important and uh, non important uh, important hernias alone we will be uh, doing it okay we will know we won't be doing everything only we will be doing about your important uh, name of uh, hernias for example like a little hernia which occurs in the named hernia and significance i rather right named hernia and significance and the significance i rather right So speaking about the named hernias and the significance, so the named hernias are number one, litter's hernia, litter's hernia, which is seen in Meckel's diverticulum, Meckel's diverticulum. Apart from that, you have a Reister's hernia, which contains a portion of bowel, Reister's hernia which contains a portion of bowel, medial hernia, hernia, where you see the W loop strangulation, see the W loop strangulation, loop strangulation, and apart from that you have a Spigalian hernia, Spigalian hernia, runs through the Spigalian fascia, Spigalian fascia. Apart from that, you have a Narath hernia, Narath hernia, which is seen in the congenital dislocation of your hip. Congenital dislocation of your hip. Dislocation of hip. Congenital dislocation of your hip. These are the important named hernias you have to know. And I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to talk about a little bit important. What are the important ones, uh, important things in, I wanted to talk about the hernia is, uh, number one is the difference between the direct and the indirect inguinal hernia the difference between the direct and indirect inguinal hernia we are having the Hasselberg's triangle where is the Hasselberg triangle people what is that uh, where does that Hasselberg's triangle is starting in the abdomen what is the medial border of Hasselberg's triangle what is the medial border of Hasselberg's triangle
Come on, come on, faster. What is the medial border of Hasselberg's triangle? What is the medial border of Hasselberg's triangle? Rectus, abdominus, lateral, lateral border, Okay, listen here, listen here, listen here. So you are having a uh, floor which is running from the anterior superior iliac spine to your pubic symphysis. To your pubic symphysis, you have an inguinal ligament. Okay, you have an inguinal ligament. Okay, now that uh, you have that inguinal ligament will form the floor of the Hasselbeck triangle, while the median border will be formed by, well, the median border will be formed by lateral wall of rectus abdominis lateral wall of rectus abdominis rectus abdominis muscle and lateral border of your uh, Hasselberg's triangle is formed by your inferior epigastric artery epigastric artery this inferior epigastric artery determines it lateral to the inferior epigastric artery you have indirect inguinal hernia while medial to the inferior epigastric artery, you have a direct inguinal hernia. Inguinal hernia. Okay. Later, you have a direct and the medial, you have a direct inguinal hernia. So, the artery which is separates or which decides whether the hernia is uh, indirect or direct is your inferior epigastric artery. Again, another important MCQ. Again, another important MCQ. This is all about the hernia, people. You need to know in the case of your uh, GIT. So we have done with the most of the part. We have done with the most of the part. Apart from that, you will be having a certain important things like uh, what sort of uh, things you will be seeing in the case of your, uh, what do we call it, uh, genital system. And apart from that, you have a small intestine and large intestine. So basically, I wanted to draw you the large intestine and their important uh, disease associations. Another important one, I rather say. So let me draw the small intestine. So small intestine will be there. Draw the three loops. One is a duodenum, another one is a jejunum, and another one is a helium. So speaking about the duodenum, jejunum, and helium. Okay, and ileum. Okay, fine. And after that ileum, you have a terminal ileum. Terminal ileum, I rather write it. Okay, what are the things which happens in the duodenum? In the duodenum, you get a diverticulosis, diverticulosis, adenoma, and atresia. Adenoma and atresia you will see in the case of duodenum. In the case of a jejunum, you get angiodysplasia, angiodysplasia, and Peutz Jagger syndrome will happen in the jejunum. Peutz Jagger syndrome, which is happening in the jejunum, Jagger syndrome, and jejunal atresia, you will see. Jejunal atresia, you will see. Apart from that, helium. You will see in the ileum, you will see number one as a paralytic ileus. Paralytic ileus. Number two, you will see the carcinoid syndrome. Number three, you will see the leomyoma. Leomyoma. And number four, you will see the lymphoma. Number four, you will see the lymphoma. Apart from that, you have a terminal ileum. On the terminal ileum, you will see the TB, Crohn's, and adenoma. And adenoma. Okay, and adenoma. These are the things you will see in the case of your uh, small intestine diseases and what are the diseases that present most of the region. Speaking about the large intestine, 
I'd rather write it as ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending colon, and rectum. Okay, and rectum. Okay, here I draw the two points. Number one is your Sudan point. Sudan point. Okay. In the ascending colon, you will be having a bleeding diverticulosis. Bleeding diverticulosis. Diverticulosis. And then in the ascending colon, meanwhile, you have another one called the HNPCC, hereditary non prolicosis colorectal cancer or ulcerative colitis plus primary sclerosing cholangitis will also happen here. Primary sclerosing cholangitis will also happen here. Apart from that, you have intestinal cells of Kajal here. Intestinal cells of Kajal. Kajal and here you have a, a transverse diverticulum which I've been ending it. There you will get ischemic colitis. Ischemic colitis followed by familial adenomatous polyposis. Here you will see the Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung disease. And here you will see the rectal carcinoma. Rectal carcinoma is another feature you will see here. Okay. These are the important features of uh, diseases which occurs in each and every location. These are the important features which occur in each and every location. Most of the book don't gives you people this information, so just write it down and give a get a bird eye view. So once you get a bird eye view, you can uh, automatically do that. You know. So this is a quite important one, and the case of your GIT. And uh, apart from that, you have a trauma. Let's go for the trauma. Apart from that, you have a trauma. Now speaking about the trauma, speaking about the trauma, what are the things you see in the case of a trauma, people? Number one is your Glasgow coma scale. The Glasgow coma scale. Prior to the Glasgow coma scale, you have that. Prior to the Glasgow coma scale, you have number one is the you have number one, whenever the trauma patient comes to you, whenever the trauma patient comes to you, what do you do? Basically, whenever the trauma patient comes to you, what do you do? You have to perform the primary survey. You have to perform the primary survey. What is a primary survey? The first thing is previously it used to be the A, B, C, D, E. Now it is used to be the exsanguination of external hemorrhage. Exsanguination of external hemorrhage. Exsanguination of external hemorrhage followed by airway, breathing, circulation, circulation, disability, and exposure. Disability and exposure. Okay, fine, you are performing the uh, you are performing the primary survey and prior managing the airway you need to remember that you have to stabilize the cervical spine you have to stabilize the cervical spine i hope the importance of the cervical spine stabilization and superman syndrome has been told you by your surgery teacher already yes or no so apart from that what is the most common uh, complication you get in the case of a tracheostomy is your URTA. And a fluid of choice in the trauma is always a ringer lactate. Fluid of choice so in the case of a trauma is always a ringer lactate. Okay, fine. Apart from that, you need to do the GCS test. You need to do the GCS test. Airway intubation is required if the GCS score is less than airway intubation is required intubation is required i rather write it here intubation is required if gcs score if gcs score is if the gcs score is how much you need to perform the intubation 
GCS score, how much you will perform the intubation? Faster, faster, people. GCS score of how much you will perform the intubation? GCS score of less than eight, you perform the intubation. Remember always, GCS score of less than eight, you will perform the intubation. Okay, and what is a GCS score you are having? Yeah? Three parameters, E, V, and M will be notified. So spontaneous eye opening is four, spontaneous eye opening is four, and the spontaneous speech is five, spontaneous. You can they can obey your commands like for example lift your uh, lift your uh, hands and lift your legs they could be able to lift you that sort of thing is a m6 so this is normal so that is a normal individual the gcs is always six okay so if the patient is having a if the patient is having a uh, eye opening only to voice response eye opening only to voice response only to voice response voice response and if the patient has a irritable cry or uh, the patient is confused you write a v4 patient is confused you write v4 and the patient is uh, showing a localized pain you get a M5, localized pain, pain, you get a M5, okay, and E2 is the patient has been response or the patient has been response obeys to speech, opens eyes to speech, okay, the patient has been opens I2, sorry, here E2 is going on, right? So since it is a E2, the patient has been obeys, uh, eye opens only to the painful stimulus. Eye opening only to pressure or painful stimulus. Painful stimulus. Full stimulus, that is E2. And you have a V3. And V3 is about only the patient speaks words. Only words. Only words and m4 m4 which is about your withdraws to pain the patient will not be awake you it will he will only withdraws to pain okay and then you are having a e1 e1 that is a no response no response not even open his eyes is a e1 and V2 and V2 it will be the patient will be moans or the patient will be saying eh? and uh, some sort of uh, abnormal sounds the patient will be doing and M3 abnormal flexion abnormal flexion okay and E1 is a since the lowest one that is a no response and uh, I rather draw the V1. V1 indicates no response. No response. And M2 indicates abnormal extension. Abnormal extension. And if your patient is E1, V1, M1 that indicates patient is not showing any response. No response. So the lowest possible GCS score is GCS score is 3 slash 15. But whenever patient is intubated, whenever patient is intubated, the entire V will be turned to entire V turned to T. V score will be T. Will be T. Because the patient is in the tube. The patient is in the tube or intubated. Then since the patient is in the tube or intubated, 
the lowest possible score in the in lowest GCS in an intubated patient in an intubated patient is 2T the lowest position lowest GCS in an intubated patient is 2T okay intubated patient is 2T this is a GCS score that you need to know in the case of a trauma and apart from that you will see the primary survey and the primary survey you will study all the type of the shock hemorrhagic shock hypovolemic shock or a hemorrhagic shock and apart from that you have a neurogenic shock and neurogenic shock septic, septic shock all those shocks you will be studying so what is the main major uh, treatment for the shock people what is the main major treatment for the shock i wanted to talk to you regarding the shock what is the major treatment for shock the major treatment for shock is your fluid resuscitation is your fluid resuscitation what is the choice of fluid you give for this patient what is the choice of fluid you give for this patient what is the choice of fluid you give for this patient very good ringer lactate is a choice of fluid you give in this patient the ringer lactate is a choice of fluid you give in this patient okay very good and apart from that you have a apart from that you are having a wound healing stages of wound healing we have been talked in the pathology itself so i don't want to talk about it apart from that you have a bex triad for the cardiac tamponade what is a bex triad for the cardiac tamponade people what is a bex triad for the cardiac tamponade what is a bex triad very good muffled heart sounds followed by muffled heart sounds increased jvp and low bp is a triad or bex triad hypotension increased jvp and muffled heart sounds is a triad which we seen in the case of a cardiac tamponade and apart from that you will be seeing a, a shock shock there are several types of shock you will be seeing at each and every uh, you know what do we call it uh, each and every uh, uh, management you will study in a surgery already so i won't want to cross into there more and more what i wanted to hear talk about is your thyroid tumors what i wanted to talk to you here is your thyroid tumors let's talk about the thyroid tumors the let's talk about the thyroid tumors Can everybody able to see the screen properly? Yes. Okay, very good. So speaking about the thyroid tumor, the most benign one is follicular adenoma. Most common benign thyroid tumor is follicular adenoma. Most common benign is follicular adenoma. adenoma thyroid tumor i rather right and the most common malignant is papillary carcinoma most common malignant is papillary carcinoma so speaking about the papillary carcinoma you see the orphan any i orphan any i and somoma bodies orphan any i and somoma bodies Samoma bodies. Apart from that, you will see the berry sign where the palpation of your carotid pulse is not uh, seen. Berry sign. And apart from that, speaking about the thyroid carcinoma, mostly it will metastasize to the bones or lungs. Okay, mostly it has been metastasized to the bones or lungs. And what is the most common one? Most common investigations you do for the thyroid tumor, FNAC is the one you do, except all thyroid tumor, except, except, what is that exception? Follicular, very good. 
very good follicular nida follicular you cannot do the f1 ac follicular you cannot do the f1 ac okay so apart from that you will have a men what type of tumors you will see in the men 1 men 2 and men 3 i rather remember with the 3p 2p followed by 1p men 1 men 2a men 2b men 2b that is a men 1 is associated with the 3p's that is a parathyroid adenoma parathyroid adenoma pituitary and pancreatic islet cell tumor pancreatic islet cell tumor cell tumor but here speaking about it you have a 2p that is a parathyroid adenoma again parathyroid adenoma again adenoma again followed by your pheochromocytoma pheochromocytoma followed by medullary carcinoma medullary carcinoma and men to b all the features of men to a plus morphonoid syndrome men to a plus morphonoid habitus morphonoid habitus and you have that important mcq cyst trunk operation is done for cyst trunk operation is done for thyroglossal cyst thyroglossal cyst okay and anti thyroid tpo antibody is seen in anti tpo antibody is seen in hashimotos hashimotos thyroiditis hashimotos thyroiditis okay apart from that you are having a breast speaking about the breast speaking about the breast nipple discharges are there nipple discharge nipple discharge and conditions i rather give you the table nipple discharge and condition speaking about the nipple discharge white discharge is seen in the milk there is a galactoria milk on the lactating breast or a prolactinoma prolactinoma apart from that you have a yellow yellow color nipple discharge indicate abscess and a green color indicates duct ectasia duct ectasia and red color or blood indicates duct papilloma red color or blood indicates ductal papilloma absent till now two ductal papilloma uh, there is a characteristic bloody discharge from the nipple the patient has been complained of the patient has been complained of and the breast mouse is so called as a fibroadenoma which is developed from the single lobule and apart from that you have a phylloidous tumor mostly develops in the old age women and then you have a breast carcinoma speaking about the breast carcinoma breast carcinoma speaking it is due to the brca1 and 2 mutation caq is associated with the gynecomastia in a male gynecomastia in male in male which results in the brca mutation and that could cause a breast carcinoma and investigation of choice is always a biopsy if the patient is greater than 40 if the patient is less than 30 usg biopsy is a investigation of choice if uh, if patient is greater than 40 if patient is less than 30 then you can do the usg then you can do the usg what is the test we use for the breast disorder the test we use for the breast disorder triple test 
a triple uh, triple test that is the triple test involves physical examination physical examination followed by radiological radiological followed by pathological examination pathological examination sometimes they added a investigation too okay sometimes they added a investigations too okay apart from that you are having a tnm staging among the tnm staging of the breast tnm staging of the breast peer do orange is present in peer do orange is present in peer do orange is present in what staging peer do orange is present in what staging people faster T4B very good T4B causes a peer to orange appearance peer to orange appearance these are the important things you need to know in the case of your breast and speaking about the vascular you will be having a Virchow's triad what is a Virchow's triad what is a Virchow's triad stasis endothelial injury stasis endothelial injury and hypercoagulability and hypercoagulability are the virtuous triad you will be having are the virtuous triad you will be having apart from that you have a varicose vein you see the dot and cockets procedure you will do for the varicose vein and then you have aortic dissection where you see the dacron graft repair you do for the aortic dissection and apart from that you have a thymoma tension pneumothorax and all and uh, based upon that you will be covered almost like uh, most of that uh, area in the case of a surgery so apart from that i wanted to talk directly regarding to certain uh, one liners that has been asked in a surgery that you need to know very sprightly okay that you need to know very sprightly let us talk about the important one liners you need to know people let us talk about the important one liners you need to know in the case of a surgery shall we talk about the important one liners people shall we talk about the important one liners yes or no faster 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 okay so first table we are going to talk about is your named operations the first table you are going to talk about your named operations and the disease and the disease so the named operation number one is palomo operation palomo operation is done for varicosil testis varicosil testis and then you have a palma operation that is done for DVT, deep vein thrombosis. Nesbit operation, Nesbit operation is done for Peyronie's disease. Peyronie's disease. And you have a Dennis Brown operation. Dennis Brown operation is done for priapism. Is done for, sorry, hypospadiasis priapism is you have a what do we call it gray action operation hypospadiasis apart from that you have a hullas myotomy done for the achalasia cardia we have done cyst trunk operation done for thyroglossal cyst we have done cyst trunk thyroglossal cyst glossal cyst and whipple's operation Ripple's operation you do for the head of pancreas and periampullary cancer cancer on head of pancreas head of pancreas you do the ripples operation and you have a milligan morgan operation 
Milligan Morgan operation. Milligan Morgan is done for hemorrhoidectomy. 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 Apart from that, you have a uh, what is that we used to have that uh, phrase operation is for uh, pancreatitis and uh, Duhamel, Svensson, and Show for the Hitchcock disease. Very, very important. Duhamel, Svensson, and Show. Svensson and so operation is for the Hitchcock disease. These are the named operation you have to know in the case of your surgery. Hitchcock's disease. Okay, these are the named operations you need to know. So Palamo is for the varicose varicose testis. Palma is for a DVT. Nesbit is for the Peyronie's. Danis Brown is for hypospadiasis. Hellers is for achalasia cardia. And apart from that, you have a cyst trunk is for thyroglossal cyst. And uh, apart from that, you have that uh, Whipple's uh, operation is for head of pancreas. And Milligan Morgan is for hemorrhoidectomy. And uh, you have that a uh, phrase is for the calcific pancreas. Bishop Cook is for meconia milius. There are certain others also. Like Aringas is for the transhiatal esophagectomy. All those things you will do in the case of your... Uh, Named operation you study in the surgery. Named operations you will study in the surgery. Apart from, apart from there are certain important uh, sentinel nodes. Apart from there are certain important sentinel nodes. What are the important sentinel nodes? I rather write it as a sentinel node and location. Sentinel node and location. Cabana is for the sentinel node of penis. Guliano, C A B A N A, Cabana is for penis. Guliano and lymph node is for the uh, breast. Breast. Lund is for the gallbladder. Gallbladder. Iris is for the uh, left axillary. Iris is for the left axillary. Axillary. And apart from the Delphic is for the thyroid. Delphic is for the thyroid. Thyroid. Apart from the virtua is for the left supraclavicle. Virtua is for left supraclavicle. Clavicle. These are the important one. You need to know in the case of a named sentinel lymph node. Apart from the important gradings, classification, named classification and the diseases, and diseases. We have studied about Johnson staging is for the gastric ulcer. Johnson staging is for gastric ulcer. Gastric ulcer. Dukes is for colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer. Dunhill is for gallbladder. Dunhill is for gallbladder, gallbladder cancer. Bismuth is for bile duct cancer. Bismuth is for bile duct cancer. Okuda staging or Barcelona staging is for Barcelona or Okuda is for liver cancer. Liver cancer. Gleason score is for prostate. Gleason score is for prostate. Bloom Richardson is for breast. Bloom and Richardson scoring is for breast. Bloom Richardson is for breast. And you have a Jackson is for the cancer penis. A Jackson is for 
hands of penis hands of penis these are the important things you need to know in the case of a named classification apart from named classification you have a important uh, what do we call it uh, um important uh, triads we can write it okay what are the conditions you will see this triads for example you have a maclaus triad which will be seen in the borough syndrome maclaus triad which you will be seeing in the borough syndrome borough syndrome instead of i'm expanding triad i'm writing the condition okay charcot's is for cholangitis charcot's triad is for cholangitis cholangitis wirchow's triad is for thrombosis wirchow's triad is for thrombosis whipples is for insulinoma whipples is for insulinoma insulinoma and the tilox is for mesenteric tracts tilox is for mesenteric tract mesenteric cyst sains is for gallstone sains is for gallstone and quinky is for hemobilia quinky striad is for hemobilia hemobilia murphy is for acute appendicitis murphy is for acute appendicitis and regulars is for regulars is for gallstone ileus regulars is for gallstone ileus gallstone ileus apart from that there are several other triad is there like a bochart triad is there my we have a sandblom triad is there all of them are there but these are quite important ones just write up these things that is more than enough and apart from that apart from that um, apart from that we have done the important things i guess we have done the important things and uh, in the surgery so with this we pass for the surgery today and uh, tomorrow we will be continuing with the psm psm will be more and more conceptual oriented uh, i'm going to teach you plenty of things because i wanted to talk more about the psm because which is so called as a morning ruler so i will talk i will spend plenty of time so most probably we will be doing uh, from evening 6 to 9 tomorrow we'll be having a two hours of session for a uh, psm and one hour session for one to one and a half hour session for anatomy so we'll be completing the entire portion by tomorrow with that you will be having a entire revision completed right s if possible only psm and anatomy is left over right for you people is there something else left over from my side is there something else left over from my side only psm and anatomy left over right surgery done and the micro done patho done pharma done biochem done physio done and uh, yeah i guess we have covered most of the portions only the psm and the anatomy is left over from me from my side so i'll be completing that by tomorrow itself so that you get a plenty of time on reading uh, again and again so read this last minute review table there are plenty of things you need to know so don't waste your time in this last moment and do most of the test revise and test revise and test yourself revise and test yourself that's what you're going to do for the rest of the days i believe you and i wish you all success and we'll be wrapping up for today and see you all guys tomorrow okay thank you everyone